Assalam o Alaikum. I am Sumbal Daniel, your lead trainer, and this is your training of primary school teachers on new books, day three. This is single national curriculum mathematics. This is activity number three of teaching strategies and demonstration. So let's have a look that what we can find in activity number three. Dear participants, as you know that mathematics is a science of numbers and space. It has its own language in terms of sign, symbols, terms, and operations. It requires intuition, logic, reasoning, and integration of various ideas and themes. Mathematical skills are used to solve many real-life problems and situations throughout life. While mathematics may be abstract in nature, it does not have to be boring, uninteresting, unenjoyable. Or difficult. So, keeping this in mind, it is important for teachers to design lesson plans that include hands-on activities such as games, quizzes, and puzzles. The major strategies recommended for teaching mathematics are as follows. Here we have teaching strategies, demonstration approach. Inquiry-based learning, brainstorming, math lab approach, discovery approach, practical work approach, and we already have at number seven cooperative learning, and number eight is problem-solving approach. Participants, today I'm going to give you an orientation on problem-solving approach. So let's have a look. This is problem-solving approach. In this approach, students are not told the solution to the situations, but they are asked to solve and overcome various situations by themselves. The major steps in problem-solving are defining the situations. Collecting and organizing data. Number third is formulation of tentative solution. Testing of tentative solution. And finally, the conclusion. So, now you are going to have a look at the problem solving loop. Here you go. The problem solving loop. You can identify that. There are five steps in the problem solving loop. Here we have identifying the problem. You can see a man holding a magnifying glass. It means that he is looking for the problem. That what the problem actually is. Now number two is explore information and create ideas. In this you can see a boy is writing down something on the paper. Which means that in this you have to create ideas using your critical thinking. In step number three, you can see that select the best idea. Here the man looks so happy because he, he has got the best idea according to his analysis. In point number four, build and test the idea. Here a man is sitting and he is trying to build that how he can uh, solve this idea and then he can test it and then number five is evaluate the results at the end a person must analyze or the whole group which is involved in this activity should analyze that what is the solution of the problem and it is valid or not here i am giving you a real life example to understand the scenario of Problem solving loop. Number one point is problem. As you studied in the problem solving loop, that at number one step you have to identify the problem. So here we have got a real life problem which states that the length of a wire is 24 meters. What different closed shapes, squares, and rectangles you can make with the given wire which has maximum area? Now here you can see that we can, we can draw 
or we can uh, make squares and rectangles of different areas however we have to find that what is the shape which has maximum area and here we have step number two which states that defining the situations so we studied that we have to define the situation at point number two that what is given and what is required what is given a wire of length 24 centimeter is given so here you can see that i have drawn a wire of orange color which is of 24 meters what is required different closed shapes can be made with the given wire which of these closed shapes has maximum area as we have done with our step number two we move on to the step number three which is collecting and organizing data that is understanding the problem so let's start or let's try to understand the problem information about closed shapes square and rectangles gathered and its area now since we are dealing with the area of rectangle and square so what we should know before solving our problem is the square its definition and the formula to finding its area so here we have a square which is 4 by 4 a square is a flat shape with four equal sides opposite sides are parallel and every angle is of 90 degrees and the formula to finding the area of square is side multiplied by side and other thing that your students should know is rectangle a four-sided flat shape with straight sides where all interior angles are right angles also opposite angles are parallel and of equal length here we have the area of rectangle which is given by the formula length into breadth and other thing the third thing that you need to know is perimeter perimeter is the length of the boundary which in this case is 24 meters let's move on to the part number four point number four is formulation of tentative solution that is devising a plan now we should know that what is the plan that we should um, implement to find the solution to the problem now if perimeter is equal to 24 meters it means that the length of the wire is 24 centimeter 24 meters now for this here we will break 24 meters into equal parts by dividing by 4 and to find its area as well this is only one option to get a square of 6 meter length and its area so the only option to get a square is that the length and breadth or in other words you can say that the side of the square is 6 meters similarly for rectangle we will divide 24 meter in such a way that the length of the rectangles will be the same and breadth of the rectangle as well so there are five options let's have a look at the options shape number one will be with the same perimeter 24 meters breadth will be 1 and length will be 11 so we will have a rectangle like this shape number 2 will be a rectangle with breadth 2 and length 10 now shape number 3 will be like this with breadth 3 and length 9 shape number 5 will be like this with breadth 5 and length 7 and the last shape will be like this breadth 4 and length 8 so here we have all of our rectangles or the square that we have got now can you tell me that which one of these has the maximum area without solving oh yes we can say that maybe this orange one has the smallest area because it is very much visible and understandable that it has lesser area than the remaining 
rectangles or square now this blue rectangle is also not the one which will have the maximum area and the same thing we can say about this red rectangle however this pink square yellow rectangle and purple rectangle they are quite in competition that which one of them is going to have the biggest area so i have devised a plan for you that how you can find the area and this is the best plan for you believe me here you go so here we have got a grid which will help you to find the area of all of these four sided shapes so we will just have to find the number of boxes and it will tell us the area that which one of them has the biggest area or the smallest area or something else so let's try so when we count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so the breadth is 11 and the length is 1 that is why the area is 1 into 11 is equal to 11 square meter in this blue rectangle we have the area 2 multiplied by 10 which is 20 meter square which means that this blue rectangle has occupied 20 boxes or 20 squares over there what about the red rectangle it has an area of 27 meter square using the same formula the yellow rectangle has the area 35 meter square and here we go the area of this square will be found using the formula side into side which is equal to 36 meter square and last but not least the formula here length into breadth is equal to 4 into 8 which is equal to 32 meter square now we have calculated the area of all the four sided shapes and you can see that the area of the square is the biggest although there was an interesting tie between the yellow rectangle and the pink square but the pink square wins just by 1 meter square there is not not much difference so it is a very interesting idea to solve such problems in which the comparison is involved so participants the step which we just did was testing of tentative solutions that is carrying out a plan in this plan what we did we calculated the areas of proposed closed shapes so here is the working of the areas and our final step is conclusion which means examining the result so let's have a look at the examination of our result 24 meter length of wire can be converted into one square and four possible rectangles of different lengths the maximum area having the shape is square which is 36 meter square however the maximum area of rectangular shape having length 4 meter and breadth 8 meter is 32 meters so maximum area of the shape is square let's go back to our problem solving loop and try to find out that what actually we have done according to the step number 1 of the problem solving loop 